Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be taking an up close look at the Antec EarthWatts 430 watt power supply. So as you might have figured from the EarthWatts moniker and maybe the little green leaf right up here, this is designed to be an eco-friendly eco power supply. And uh, to keep up with that, it is 80 plus bronze certified. 80 plus is an efficiency rating. So it's basically saying that under load, this power supply needs to be able to deliver 80% efficiency. There's different uh, variations depending on the amount of load on the power supply. If you're interested, you can head over to 80plus.org for more information. Again, a 430 watt power supply, it's compatible with ATX 12 volt spec version 2.3, has an 80 millimeter fan, and uh, going along with the green theme, they actually do not include a power cord. Reason for that being, the assumption is that if you're buying this power supply as an upgrade, you probably already have one of those AC power cords. I know myself, I probably have at least 10 in a box in my closet. So if you've already got one, it saves a little bit on uh, materials to not have the power cord included. Keep that in mind if you are buying this power supply. Next up on the side of the box over here, we can see that it's, they're actually saying, in, depending on the load they put on this, it will have up to 80%, I'm sorry, 87% efficiency. It uh, also features active power factor correction, uh, 80 plus bronze specifications, 80 millimeter fan. Uh, it has a single six pin PCI Express connector for a video card, and we're gonna test that out in just a moment here. And finally down here in the bottom, we can see all of our connectors, which is a 20 plus four pin motherboard connector. We have an ATX or EPS, four pin or eight pin, uh, dual use plug for your mother, uh, supplemental motherboard power. Again, the one six pin PCI Express power plug, five serial ATA power plugs, four peripheral Molex power plugs, and a single floppy connector. That said, let's go ahead and get this out of the box so we can take a closer look at the power supply itself. And apart from the aforementioned AC power cable, Antec gives you just about everything you need to get going, including silica gel, don't eat that. We have four black mounting screws to mount the power supply to your case. We have eco-friendly packaging. You'll notice the brown paper recycled, uh, just continuing with the EarthWatts theme. Here is our installation and specifications manual. This, uh, is used for a few different models of the Antec EarthWatts power supply line. Black and white manual. And there is our 430 watt Antec EarthWatts power supply. And uh, I'm not sure how well you guys can tell, but this actually is a green in color power supply, which is first time I've ever actually seen a power supply housing that's that color. But it's got a pretty basic, simple finish. Let me flip that over so you guys can actually take a closer look at it. Uh, if you're checking out our DC output ratings, you can see that this is designed around two 12 volt rails. So you have one 17 amp 12 volt rail, one 16 amp 12 volt rail, Apart from that, it's pretty standard, but all of your necessary information there. Here we have our AC power connector, on off switch, and 80 millimeter fan at the back. And as far as cabling goes, we already went over this on the box, but just to verify, yes, we have our PCI Express 6 pin power, CPU ATX or EPS power, 4 plus 4, and then all of our uh, motherboard power connectors as well as peripheral connectors for serial ATA and Molex plugs all in that bundle right there. So that is pretty much all there is to talk about with the power supply itself. But this is an EarthWatts power supply. It is meant to be eco-friendly. And if you're purchasing this type of power supply, you're probably interested in what type of actual wattage savings you might get when you're running a computer off of it. That's what all this stuff over here is for. So what I'm gonna do is plug this power supply into this uh, setup right here, which we have, which is a P67 based motherboard, uh, an Intel Core i5 2500K CPU. We have an Asus GTX 550Ti power, uh, video card, I should say. And uh, this video card recommends a 400 watt minimum power supply. So we're 
should be set with our EarthWatts right there. And then we have a Blu-ray drive, which I've used to load our operating system, and a single SSD. Only thing we're really missing here, power-wise, that you would have in a full computer is possibly a magnetic hard drive, uh, which usually only use about 10 to 15 watts of power under load even. So there is our test bed, so to speak, set up, and I'm gonna plug this in, and then we have a watt meter on the wall, so we're gonna see how much power it draws at idle, and then how much power it draws once we run a simple benchmark. All right, folks, everything is now plugged in to our Antec EarthWatts 430 watt. I'm going to fire this up. I also have a flip camera right over here that you can't really see, but we're monitoring our used wattage. So I've just turned it on and standby right now, it's only pulling 1.7 watts. So I'm going to power on our system here. And you guys can check out and see what wattage is drawn during power up. We're going to take another reading once it's booted up and we're just stable within uh, Windows. See what our idle power is. I uh, see right now we're jumping up to the 90 watts draw for the total system. Uh, but just to clarify for you guys, what's actually plugged in right now. We uh, used our own AC power plug to plug in the earth watts and we have five connection points of power from the power supply. Two of them are right here, one for our SSD, one for our Blu-ray drive. Uh, our 24 pin power connector is plugged into the motherboard right here. Our 8 pin EPS power connector is also plugged into the motherboard up here. And uh, wait, wait, I thought I had one more item. That's one. Oh, and of course our PCI Express power 6 pin, which is plugged into our video card. All right, guys, our CPU usage has leveled off. We're right, uh, maintaining right about 0%. So this is right around your average system idle. And I can see we're pulling between 48 and 51 or 52 watts from the wall. So that's at idle, and that's pretty low for your average computer system at idle. But what we want to find out is what actually happens when we put a little load on. So what I'm going to do is load up Passmark here, Passmark Performance Test 7.0. We're just going to let that run. It goes through a bunch of different tests, testing various components of the computer putting loads on stuff like the CPU and the GPU. Um, it's not super intensive, but it should give us a general idea of what sort of power usage we will get when we're doing our normal day-to-day -day computing applications. Let us continue. All right, so there's our setup. It's got all of our hardware listed there. I'm just gonna click Run Benchmark. So it'll take a few minutes to run through, and we'll just keep an eye on our uh, wattage draw from the wall for our total system, and we'll let you guys know what got the most juice coming from the wall, depending on what test is running. 74, 102, 118, 85, 79, 105. This is running a CPU physics test. 110, 84, 85, 88, 83. All right, it's getting into some graphics tests now. These are 2D, 2D graphics tests running through some image filters, that sort of thing. Still maintaining right around the 85 watts. Now it's putting a bit more load on the GPU because it's running some 3D graphics tests. So at this point, we're pulling up to 145 watts, which is 146, 150. That's the most we've seen total system draw so far, running these 3D tests. 150 watts, though, is still pretty marginal for a full system such as this. Sorry. 161 watts, that's another, uh, oh, 162. That's our peak so far. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps it up. Our testing is complete. Uh, again, this was a power supply test, so our actual results here don't matter too much. But in case anyone is curious, uh, we scored 3,159.7 on our pass mark tests. And uh, our power supply wattage monitoring, monitoring, we hit up to about 162 watts max, was the most power we drew from the wall while running our pass mark tests. So there you have it. This has been the Antec, Antec EarthWatts 430 Watt. Uh, I'm Paul from Newegg TV. Thanks a lot for watching today's video, and we'll see you next time.